apply it in our life. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I want to begin uh, again uh, straight uh, by saying life is full of broken dreams and promises because of fallen human nature. We've been addressing this issue of the DNA of sin, uh, the fallen human nature, and that's where our uh, troubles begin. Uh, it began in, in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve sinned against God. Now, everywhere you look, uh, people are brokenhearted. People are brokenhearted and they, because of their broken dreams and promises. And this happens at individual, at family, at corporate, uh, at corporate levels. So at every level you look at, uh, people are brokenhearted because of broken dreams, broken promises. At this time of COVID-19, like we said in our prayer, people have lost jobs. Uh, businesses are not thriving. The economy is downwards, oh God, and people are sick and people uh, have died even, and all of us are suffering and we are brokenhearted. But in Genesis 41 and 42, we find that unlike man, uh, God is good and God works to fulfill all his promises in his perfect time. God works to fulfill all his promises in his perfect time. In, in fact, in Genesis 41, we see uh, God fulfilled Pharaoh's prophetic dream perfectly. He did. Yes, uh, that dream was interpreted that there will be uh, seven years of ab abundance and there will be seven years of, of famine. And by the end of uh, chapter 42, we'll see that being fulfilled uh, uh, perfectly. Uh, in Genesis uh, 42, we see God fulfilled Joseph's prophetic dream of ruling, uh, ruling and reigning over his brothers. And remember when he revealed that to his father and his brothers, they mocked him. And indeed, they called him this dreamer. But now in Genesis 42, we see them bowing. They didn't even know they were bowing uh, before him, but they bowed. They thought they were bowing before an Egyptian, but in, indeed they bowed before Joseph. And of course, Joseph uh, had to deal with them at that point in time. So God fulfills his dreams perfectly. And from this passage, we learn that God's goodness is revealed in his perfect fulfillment of prophetic dreams and destinies. God's goodness is revealed in his perfect fulfillment of prophetic dreams and destinies. I have two divisions. Two divisions. The division one is God's goodness in fulfillment of prophecy, Genesis 41. God's goodness in fulfillment of prophecy, Genesis 41. And division two, God's goodness in fulfillment of destiny. At Genesis uh, 42. So quickly, let's go to the first division there and look at uh, God's goodness in fulfillment of prophecy. Of course, here we are talking about God fulfilling uh, Pharaoh's uh, prophetic dream. Now, in uh, verses 1 to 24 of Genesis 41, we see Pharaoh's troubling dream that none could interpret. And you can see here, God is setting up uh, a situation where Joseph is going to be elevated. So God gives Pharaoh a dream that no one else in Egypt uh, could uh, interpret. And so uh, Joseph has to come in. But this is two years, two full years after the cup bearer's release. Uh, so remember, uh, this cup bearer, when his dream was interpreted, uh, Joseph made him promise that he would remember him and he would get him out of prison. But we know that after that, uh, 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 this cupbearer forgot. He forgot Joseph, and uh, he must have been uh, very busy doing the work he was doing. And for two years, he forgot Joseph, who interpreted his dream correctly. You and I should not be surprised when people forget us, when people overlook us, when people just kind of even ignore us. Because this man could have forgotten, or maybe he thought, well, why should I even remember to reward a slave? Uh, who is going nowhere anyway. So he must have decided, no, that's not my business. And so for two years, we see that Joseph, despite being good to cupbearer, he's forgotten. But then God does not forget us. God does not forget us. And we see at, his, at the opportune time, in God's perfect timing, now God orchestrates uh, for Pharaoh to have a dream 
and that dream nobody could interpret, so Joseph would have to step in. Now, in the first uh, dream, uh, uh, Pharaoh saw seven sleek fat cows emerging from the Nile River, and they grazed among the, re the reeds. Then uh, soon after that, seven ugly skinny cows emerged from the Nile, and they ate up the seven sleek cows, and then Pharaoh woke up, so very troubling. And Pharaoh, for uh, give him credit, he understood that dream was prophetic, and he knew there's an interpretation, and of course, uh, he wanted that dream to be interpreted. He fell to sleep again, and then the second dream, uh, there were seven heads of healthy good grain, again, which were growing on, a, on again, uh, on a single stalk. And then after them, there were seven thin heads of grain emerged, and they swallowed up the seven healthy heads of grain. And then again, Pharaoh woke up. So two dreams, uh, about seven uh, cows and seven heads of grain, and Pharaoh, of course, understood there is some significance in those two dreams happening in the same night. Now, you and I remember that uh, uh, the car bearer and the baker, they had also their dreams on the same night. So uh, these people understood when you have this kind of dream, there must be meaning to them. So in the morning, Pharaoh uh, summoned all his magicians and wise people, uh, men in Egypt, uh, but none could interpret uh, uh, for him the dream. Now, we know in those days, uh, uh, kings and rulers used to have these uh, magicians and wise men. Of course, these are not believers. And of course, uh, uh, they used to interpret these things. So this time, they are not able to interpret. And of course, you must be uh, uh, knowing that Pharaoh must have been very angry with them because uh, that was their JD. Their JD was to read the stars, uh, to study the moon, uh, to study sciences and uh, all these things and be able to interpret and tell Pharaoh what is going on. So by this time, they were not able to, inter, uh, to intervene. And you and I know why. It's because God stopped them, because God wanted Joseph to step in. So God is sovereign. God is good, and God is sovereign. Indeed, God is so good that when he needs to lift you from the pit to the prison, he will orchestrate things for you. And even people who are better than you, he will stop them from shining, from performing, so then you may step up and you may me notice. So don't worry, people are running ahead of you. We're in a rat race, and we tend to have many people wanting to compete. You don't have to be the first one on the queue. God can take you from last to first. And here, that is what God is going to do. And so we see God is good. And at the right time, God is going to do the right thing that he needs to do. So at this moment, then we see that uh, this, this cup bearer, uh, he remembered. Now we are told this time, he remembered. Of course he remembered Joseph because Pharaoh is angry. All these magicians who he's paying about and they're eating his food and they're hanging around, now they can't interpret. Now he's going to deal with them. So, uh, of course, Kaber, uh, at this time he remembered and uh, of course he tells Pharaoh about Joseph and Pharaoh sends for Joseph and of course when Joseph comes he's cleaned up very quickly and now Joseph is before Pharaoh and Pharaoh of course tells uh, Joseph about uh, those uh, two uh, dreams. And of course, Joseph here, we are going to see in verses 25 to 36, Joseph will see Joseph interpreting Pharaoh's dream, but also uh, Pharaoh's dream, but also advising Pharaoh what to do. So, of course, uh, so Joseph told Pharaoh that the dreams were one and the same, but first of all, Joseph told Pharaoh that only God could interpret the dream. And we see that Joseph gave God the glory. He gave God credit. Many a time when uh, uh, we uh, do things, we tend to take glory, to steal God's glory. Now, we need to learn that our talents, our gifting, our ministry, that is a gift of God, and we need to glorify God. So Joseph here, he's no longer that show-off who was showing to his brothers that they are going to bow down, who was even telling the father and the mother they are going to bow down, and he was very proud of it. Now here, he's very careful to say, well, it's God who will interpret this dream for you, Pharaoh. I cannot and God will do it. So we need not to be proud because of our gifting, our talent. We need to glorify God. So Joseph goes ahead to tell Pharaoh the dreams are one and the same. And he tells them the seven good cows and the seven good heads of grain are seven years of abundance. Uh, they are going to get abundant grain harvest. And the seven lean uh, cows and the seven worthless grain heads, uh, that is uh, farming that would follow. So uh, those seven years and seven, uh, 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 seven cows and seven 
uh, grain heads uh, represented years of famine and years of abundance. But we see that uh, Joseph told uh, Pharaoh that the dream was repeated because the matter had been firmly decided and it would surely come to pass. So that's why the dream was repeated because the council of God in heaven had agreed that there is going to be a famine, but before the famine, there were going to be seven years of abundant harvest. So Joseph uh, then tells Pharaoh what to do. Now, how did Joseph know this? Well, God must have told him. From the time maybe he stood before Pharaoh, he must have prayed. We are not given the details. He must have asked God to, uh, you know, uh, help him interpret. So we know it's God who gave Pharaoh the dream, and we know it's God who has given Joseph the interpretation. So you and I, when we have dreams, or when we have issues, or we have circumstances that we don't understand in our lives, it's not good asking magicians. It's not good going to sorcerers and witch doctors. We need to ask God. We need to ask God. We need to pray. We need to ask God what's going on because God is able uh, to help us understand what's going on in our lives. In verses 33 to 46, we see that Joseph advised Pharaoh what to do to avert the famine in Egypt. So Pharaoh was to save 20% of the food during the seven years of abundance so then he could feed the people during the famine. Uh, and that sounded such a good, good, good advice uh, from Joseph uh, and the Pharaoh and his officials, uh, they agreed. It was a good plan. And they decided now also uh, to promote Joseph because he's the one who has interpreted this dream and he's the one who has come even with a strategic plan on what to do. And of course, common sense dictated uh, this man who God is speaking to, let's give him the job. And in fact, Pharaoh tells him uh, they cannot find a man like Joseph in Egypt, a man in whose uh, the spirit of God is indwelling. So you can see how Joseph got, gets God to be glorified. So Joseph now is uh, then promoted to second in command. If you read uh, your notes, you see that Pharaoh went to great lengths even to explain how uh, only as regard his throne uh, that uh, he's bigger than Joseph. So Joseph was going to be a kind of a prime minister in Egypt. So Joseph is promoted from prison uh, to the palace in a single day, just like that. And you and I need to note uh, this passage here in the, is here in the Bible because God can do the same for you and I today. It does not matter what we are going through in life. It doesn't matter what suffering we are, we are undergoing. It doesn't matter what trouble there is. It doesn't matter what uh, temptation and testing there is. God can switch this thing just like that in a day like he did for Joseph. So we need to stand on God's promises. We need to stand on the word of God. If God has given us a promise, if there's a word of God we believe, then we need to know it doesn't matter. Joseph waited for 13 years, and here we see he has become second only to Pharaoh. I need to ask you, what do you think is happening to Potiphar's wife? What do you think is happening to Potiphar? Because they took Joseph to prison, and Joseph had not done anything wrong. And now Joseph is number two in command, and I can tell you, many people who had offended Joseph now, they have to be quite careful. We, we know that Joseph was given instruments of power. He was given a signet ring. He was given a gold chain. And he was also given a new set of robes. So really, no wonder his brothers could not rec recognize him later because you can see the kind of grooming uh, that he underwent. He is going to look like an Egyptian official. Uh, uh, Pharaoh also gave Joseph a wife and a chariot. Now, this wife, I was telling somebody, a wife to monitor him 24-7 because now they realize this guy is a, is, is a foreigner and he's here. So what do we do? We give him a wife so then uh, we know what's going on. <laughs> so Joseph, Pharaoh is, uh, Joseph is given a wife by, by Pharaoh and this wife is from a high priest so uh, she is a woman of stature in the community and of course uh, he will be telling Pharaoh what Joseph is doing. And also he's given a chariot without riders who commanded people to bow down as Joseph was approaching, just the kind of motorbikes you see around now with your people running around and kicking you out of the streets. Now Joseph now, people have to leave the streets because Joseph is approaching. Not only leave the street, they had to bow. So Joseph really is uh, as Pharaoh now in Egypt. He didn't look for it. He didn't ask for it. He was a humble prisoner, but you can see God has really elevated you. 
You and I don't have to go seeking for power. We don't have to go looking for wealth. We don't have to go looking for anything. We need to serve God wherever we are. And if God deems it necessary, he will lift you to the highest office in the land. So now Joseph is number two in command. We are told Joseph entered Pharaoh's uh, civil service when he was 30 years old. Remember, he was dreaming. He was sold to slavery when he was 17. So a cool 13 years have, have, have passed. Uh, Joseph has suffered enough. And now Joseph is rejoicing number two in Egypt. And of course, this, of course, uh, is going to set the drama for our division two. We are told in verses 46 to 49, Joseph implemented the food security strategy. Remember, he interpreted the dream. Now he has been given the office. And during the seven years of abundance, Joseph collected and stored up huge quantities of food uh, beyond measure. They couldn't even keep the record because of how much food there was. They stopped keeping the record because uh, they were saving so much. During the same pe period, Joseph got two sons. The firstborn, he named him Manasseh, saying, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble. You can see Joseph now is really uh, thanking God, but also he's realized the trouble he was in. Now God is uh, rewarding him, is compensating him. And of course, he calls his son Manasseh, meaning forget, forgetting my trouble. You and I, when God blesses you and moves you from trouble and blesses you, we need to praise him. He got the second son. He called him Ephraim, meaning it is because God has made me fruitful. So Joseph realized, actually, whatever is happening to him, uh, it's because God is at work in his life. You and I, the way we name our children, uh, and the name we even name our, our businesses, the way we name, or whatever we name, it needs to reflect our faith in God. It needs to reflect our faith in God. Now we are told the seven years of abundance came to an end, just like Joseph had prophesied, and the seven years of famine began and, of course, there, there was going to be a great famine. And the people came to Joseph to buy grain, and we know also that uh, his brothers from Canaan would come to buy grain. So, because this famine was worldwide, at least everywhere in the known world, or at least in the far east, in the Middle East. So, and of course, we know that his brothers are going to come down to Egypt. Now, Joseph's interpretation of Pharaoh's dream and its fulfillment is what is called fulfillment of prophecy. This dream of Pharaoh and its interpretation and its fulfill fulfillment, this is what we call in the Bible fulfillment of prophecy. So what is fulfillment of prophecy? Now, biblical prophecy reveals the future. Biblical prophecy reveals the future. According to the Bible, thousands of prophecies have been fulfilled while many more are awaiting to be fulfilled. So this one of Pharaoh, the dreams of Joseph, those are just a few. But the Bible is full of many, many prophecies. Many thousands of them fulfilled. Many more thousands of them to be fulfilled. More than 20 Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled within 24 hours of Jesus' crucifixion. Uh, remember there were many, very many prophecies about how Jesus would be crucified. For example, his bones were not to be crushed. And you remember there's somebody who went crushing the bones of the two prisoners. When uh, he came to Jesus, he was already dead, so his bones were not crushed. An example of a fulfilled prophecy. Now, fulfillment of prophecy proves that the God of the Bible is the true God because only God has the knowledge to declare the future and the power to make it happen. Only God can call the future, declare the future, and has the power to make it happen. Fulfilled prophecy also proves that the Bible is God's word because only he can accurately forecast the future events. Because uh, the Bible is the word of God, so then we know the Bible is true. Fulfilled prophecy also attests to God's sovereign rule over his creation. Uh, God is sovereign. His decrees govern history, so whatever God decrees, it has to happen because creation responds to what God says. So if God says today it's going to rain, even though it was not going to rain, it must rain because uh, the creation must respond to what God says. So if today God says you're going to get well, you will get well because uh, that must happen. Fulfilled prophecy also reveals God's omniscience uh, because God knows everything. He knows the past, present, and future. So uh, fulfilled prophecy 
uh, prove that God is omniscient. It also proves God is omnipotent. Uh, God is all powerful because whatever God says to happen, it will happen. And this brings us to our first principle. God's goodness is revealed in his perfect fulfillment of biblical prophecy and promises. God's goodness is revealed in his perfect fulfillment of biblical prophecy and promises. That is God's goodness. Because he fulfilled uh, perfectly his uh, biblical prophecy and promises, just like we've seen in the case of Pharaoh. You and I know many promises. You and I in the Bible, I'm sure there are many promises you hold on to. I, I have one I hold on to which says, I was young, but now I'm old, but I'll not see the righteous forsaken. Now there are children begging bread. That is my promise. I hold on to that. David said so. And I'm holding on to that because now I'm retired, I'm old, and I know God will not forget me. I will not see the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging bread. That I'm holding on to. Now, what about you? What biblical prophecies and promises are you trusting God to fulfill in your life? this season. You could be unwell and you want to be healed. There are so many uh, biblical uh, prophecies that talks about our healing. You need to hold on to that. You need to wait on God. It doesn't matter how long you're sick, you need to trust that God because he said he is the one who says his word and heals our diseases that is going to heal you. What broken dreams and promises have wrecked your life? Many of us have many uh, dreams and promises that have wrecked our lives and uh, at times you can be discouraged. Like Joseph, you need to be prepared to wait in the long haul. Be prepared to wait like Joseph for 13 years and don't waver in faith. Be like Abraham. Uh, surrender all your broken dreams and promises to God. Even when the cup bearer forgets you, uh, don't grumble, don't complain. Wait for God to fulfill uh, your prophetic uh, dream and promises. Quickly, let's go to our second division and look at how God's goodness fulfills his people's destiny. Now we are in Genesis 42, and in verses 1 to 5, we are told that when Jacob had learned that there was grain in Egypt, he sent his son uh, to, on, uh, to Egypt to buy the grain. Now, that journey was six weeks journey to Egypt. And so Jacob here, yeah, he has his grain in Egypt, and of course he tells his son to go down to Egypt uh, so then they can buy grain. And you can see how dramatic God can be. He orchestrates a drought in Egypt. Joseph now is the one in charge of the grain in Egypt. These sons are the ones who sent Joseph to Egypt, and now they are going to Egypt to buy grain, and they, they, are, they don't even know what they are going to find there. We are told here anyway that Joseph remained with Benjamin because he was Joseph's younger brother. Of course, he didn't know that Joseph was still alive. And listen to what he said. Uh, he's going to remain with Je Benjamin because he was afraid that harm might come to him. Just like Joseph was killed uh, by wild animals, he thought, he said, well, I'm not going to let this uh, brother of Joseph go down there. Something might happen to him. So being very cautious. But also, Jacob here, also, always playing favorite. Uh, this uh, Benjamin is the son of, uh, of Jacob's favorite wife. Uh, Jacob here is still a man just like you and me. He's still playing favorite, and God doesn't like favoritism. But again, he's human, and he's doing what he thinks best. We are told that in verses 6 to 24 of Genesis 42, as soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but they didn't because of his... Egyptian grooming. Remember of the way he had been given all those clothes, now he's looking like Pharaoh, and of course he's talking through an interpreter. His brothers could not recognize him, and of course they were expecting he was dead, so and I'm sure they were not expecting to see Joseph anywhere. And so they went and bowed down to him, fulfillment of prophecy. Remember again, uh, when they were still in, uh, in Canaan, uh, when Joseph had his prophetic dream, and he talked about uh, the 12 stars that would bow, and they refused, they mocked him, and they hated him, and they were very jealous of him. And of course, here what happens? Uh, that they bow before him. Of course, they don't know they are bowing before Joseph, 
but this is again his fulfillment of prophecy. God is able to make every dream to be fulfilled. And here uh, we know that Joseph was given that dream by God. And here we see these brothers. They are fulfilling without even knowing they are fulfilling uh, this uh, prophecy. But Joseph pretended not, uh, to be a stranger to them. And he accused them of being spies, of which they denied. Of course, Joseph wanted to test them. Remember, they, they, they sold him to slavery. Remember, they wanted to kill him. And now here they've come to buy grain. So you can't blame Joseph wanting to trust them and see, these are the, my brothers who wanted to kill me. Let me see whether they've learned anything. So I don't think really he was being harsh. I, I think he just wanted to know where are they at after all these 13 years. Of course, they explained there were 11 brothers. They were being scrutinized now. They were on the carpet. They were being uh, questioned. Uh, they say they were brothers of one man in Canaan or Canaan. And their youngest brother had been left with the, their father, uh, while one brother, <laughs> that was Joseph, was no more. So they, if I was Joseph, I would say, now tell me about that one. <laughs> that one who's no more. They tell me what happened to him. That, if I was just, Joseph was very lenient with his brothers. If I was Joseph, I would say, no, 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 don't go too fast. Tell me this one brother that is no more. Where is he? And of course... <laughs> So, well, Joseph was more gracious than me. Of course, he didn't press them very hard. And, of course, we are told that uh, Joseph, on hearing this, uh, he insisted they were spies. He should have told them, no, 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 tell me about that one, brother. Did you sell him somehow? Although that might sell him. <laughs> oh, yes. So, of course, he insisted they were spies. And he went ahead to lock them for three days. So, he also uh, kind of also wanted them to really kind of uh, rethink themselves. On the third day, he released them and sent them back to Canaan with much grain and with their money back in their bags. They didn't know that money was in their bag. On the way, they discovered that. They were shocked. Of course, they went home. Uh, but also, we know that somewhere along the way, uh, uh, Pharaoh also, Joseph also, had Simeon locked up because uh, then he wanted uh, surety for Benjamin to be brought back. So, of course, now they have to go home to their father. They have to go without uh, Simeon. They have to go, and uh, Joseph, remember now, as far as the father was concerned, is dead, and this is not going to be good news. And so, of course, they go home, and they report what has happened, and of course, Jacob is very unhappy. He's actually very distraught, and of course, he's saying, no, 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 I have lost Joseph. Already, Joseph, I lost him. Simeon now is in jail. Now you tell me you want to take Benjamin back to Egypt. Listen to what uh, Jacob says. He's moaning. You have deprived me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more. And now you want to take Benjamin? Everything is against me. Now, we talk like that. Is that correct? Of course not. Nothing was against, <laughs> Nothing was against Jacob. We need to be careful when we are going through suffering, and we start to confess things because of the things we are seeing in physical. This is ignorance. Joseph, uh, Jacob did not know what God was doing in the background. Uh, and many a time, even you and I, as we go through suffering, we are going through suffering during COVID, we really don't know what God is doing. Uh, we need to pray that God gives us the grace to go through suffering and that God may give us discernment uh, and even grace to really uh, not to say the wrong thing. So here, Jacob is speaking faster than he should be speaking. If we would have remembered the prophecy, uh, what God told uh, Abraham uh, in Genesis 12, he told him, his people, your people will become slaves in a foreign, uh, in a far country, and they'll be there for 400 years, and uh, then I'll get them out from there. So, of course, none of these people is remembering all those things that God has spoken, and now they are missing out on what God is doing. We know in all this suffering of Joseph, we know God wants to take uh, these people to Egypt, so then, when they come out, they are a nation. Now, this brings us to our second principle. God's goodness is revealed in his perfect fulfillment of his people's dreams and destinies. God's goodness is revealed in his perfect fulfillment of his people's dreams and destinies. So God is always working to fulfill his people's dreams and destinies. We see here God is fulfilling Joseph's dream and destiny. This man, Joseph, was destined to be a ruler. Of course, nobody understood he's going to be a ruler in Egypt. 
He was going to save many nations. He was even going to save his father and his brothers. Of course, when he suggested that in the dream, they never understood because we always understand in part. And of course, they never understood. So, and uh, as God is fulfilling that, there's a bit of confusion. But God's goodness is always revealed in his perfect fulfillment of his people's dreams and destiny. You and I, God is going to fulfill your dream and destiny. If God has given you a dream, God has made you a promise, he's going to fulfill it. And the details of how he does it, they are not ours, but if we continue to trust God, he will fulfill it. Now, in teaching God's word for me, uh, it's God's goodness fulfilling my destiny and my dreams. Remember, I shared some times back, this is not something I was looking for. I was even very scared, and I was even praying for my teaching leader never to get sick because I never wanted to stand before men and be able to speak. But what did God do? Well, God fulfilled his, my plan, his plan for me and destiny for me. So God is able to fulfill his people's dreams and destiny. So how has God's goodness empowered you to fulfill your dreams and destiny? If you look back, you see things you're doing that you never thought you would be doing. Many Christian leaders, many leaders even in BSF, are group leaders, admin leaders, children leaders. I mean, what we do in BSF, if you talk to men, they will tell you they never thought one day they will be able to be serving God in this capacity. The work we do in our churches, in our communities, again, uh, for God, is God fulfilling uh, his people's dreams and destiny. So if God has empowered you to fulfill your dream and destiny, please share with others in the next fellowship. Share what God has done in your life and how he has uh, uh, fulfilled your dreams and destiny. Secondly, how many broken dreams and promises have left you bitter and broken hearted? Many a time we get many dreams that are not fulfilled. We get broken hearted, that's where we started. But again, from what you know, you need not to be broken hearted. You need to wait for God. Remember also Abraham waited for 25 years to get the child of the promise. He was promised that child at 75. He didn't get that child until he was 100 years old. Again, don't be broken hearted. You need to have faith. Wait on God's goodness to be revealed in his perfect time. Like Joseph, who do you need to forgive for sabotaging your dreams and destiny? Pharaoh's wife was sabotaging Joseph's dream. How about even Potiphar himself jailing Joseph and he hadn't done any wrong? How about even the cup bearer who should have released Joseph didn't? Uh, you could say that was a way of trying to sabotage Joseph's destiny. But God, so if people have messed up with you, messed up with your career, your business, your ministry, whatever, forgive them because only God is able uh, to make you fulfill your destiny, not people. So tonight, forgive them, pray for them. And when God puts you in a place of authority, remember not to revenge because uh, God is the one who makes you to be able to fulfill your destiny. Now, in conclusion, although the world is full of many broken dreams and promises, God is good. And his goodness is revealed through his perfect fulfillment of our prophetic dreams and destinies. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this passage that is so elevating. We see one man who suffered so much uh, moving from prison in one day and becoming the number two in the nation of Egypt. And we know that is a reflection of the works you do in the lives of your people. You are able to move us from our suffering and you are able to elevate us to a place of rejoicing. How I pray that this uh, passage will resonate with hearts of men and our lives will be transformed. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.